talking to that lady and I think her name was Mary I'm not sure but uh, she's a real sweet uh, sweet lady and uh, asked if she knew a good guitar player and uh, she said well yeah I know a guy and, and he lives out towards Chinkapin which is where we're headed now uh, his name was uh, Casey also so uh, and she gave me his number and I got up with him I called him one night I was kind of scared I was scared to death to call a kid and I, I called him and I said, look, Casey, I was uh, thinking about putting together a uh, Christian rock band. And, I, you know, I'm a bass player, or that, you know, at that time I thought I was. And uh, I said, are you interested? And he said, uh, he said, I sure am. He said, I'm very interested in doing that. And uh, so that's kind of where, uh, where everything kind of took off at. Um, uh, we have been through so many changes. Uh, I remember Steve Rivenbark at one time, which is a, just an excellent guitar player and singer. He was playing with us, as was his wife singing with us, and she was a she was a great singer. Uh, Danny Boone at one time, uh, which he plays drums now for the Royal Descendants, which is a uh, uh, a southern gospel band, that, you know, really good band, and. Uh, he is, uh, he played drums for them now, and uh, he, even Jason Matthews, uh, who went on to Nashville and actually uh, has got a couple of uh, chart uh, toppers that he has written for several other artists, you know, all of us kind of touched base here at this, uh, here at this place at one time or another, and uh, it was just, it's just weird how it, how it kind of evolved, and uh, when me and Casey got together, you know, we, you know, we play a little bit, you know, have a little something good going, and then kind of fall all apart again. And either I was wishy-washy, he was wishy-washy. We could never decide um, really what kind of direction we want to go. But uh, years later, I even, you know, I had, you know, just put the thought away from even doing it. And uh, man. I thought about doing a uh, you know a secular band, so you know Casey came in. We played a couple of secular songs and stuff, and uh, had a good time doing it. And he, he kept mentioning this guy um, that is that his cousin kept mentioning. His name was uh, his name was um, uh, Salvatore Lana, which he called him Sal. And he said uh, 
He said, Sal's a really good drummer, and why don't, you know, when he when he moves here, why don't we start playing? And uh, I kept, you know, I said, well, that sounds good. So about that time, I'm, I'm pumped up. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready to start playing. And, uh, and but Sal never showed up. <laughs> so I was wondering, I said, where is, where you know, where is this Sal at? You know, um, you know, you keep talking about him. I, 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 I was beginning to believe that this Sal was a, a fictitious character, and um, he said no. Um, he, he said he, he said he's from New York. He's moving down with his wife. Um, he's decided he wants to move to North Carolina. He's building a house and actually rode by Burgall, which is where, it's where Sal lives, and that's actually where the same house he stays in now. To see if the kid, the kid was building a house, and he was. And uh, man, this is traffic is terrible. And uh, Man, what's up with this? And uh, he was building a house. So one day I got that call from Casey. He said, "Hey, you need to go to Maple Hill with me." Which was Sal. You know, he rented a house there at the time. You know, while he was still building his. He said, you "Need to go to Maple Hill. Sal's got his drum set there. Get your bass, your bass amp, and we're going to go out there and play." So uh, I did. I still wasn't expecting to see Sal. And I. Uh, Got out there, I met him, and um, struck a few chords together. Man, it sounded really good. And I was like, "Wow, you know, um, you know, this, you know, this, this, something could happen here." Uh, and then we kind of left the Christian, um, the Christian music, and then went on to um, secular music, playing stuff like Journey, Kansas, uh, Cry Love, all that kind of stuff, and. Um, it kind of went on from there, and it kind of dissipated after a while, and, you know, we really never did anything you know, with it. these people right here. Uh, just give me a sec. My musical influences. Oh wow, got so many of them. I don't even know where to begin. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of rock, you know, before I got saved and come to Christ. Um, I listened to a lot of Eric Clapton. Um, I listened to BB King, guitar player. Um, listened to a lot of guitarists like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani. Um, a lot of different guitar players. Really liked a lot of guitar rock and uh, classical music. Um, I was really influenced a lot in church, man, when, uh, gospel music when I was young. Um, I sang a lot of gospel music. Um, as a matter of fact, that's where I first started singing was in church. Um, gave my heart to the Lord at a young age. Kind of strayed away from God when I was in my early 20s. Come back to Christ when I was in my 30s. Kind of strayed away again when I was in my four, early, early 40s. So, uh, I've learned that, that um, no matter how far you stray, no matter how far you feel like you've drifted from God, He's always there with a strong right hand to lead you back and give you another chance. Poor 316, well actually, I had met um, a bass player by the name of Stephen Bowen. It was in Wallace. This was probably back in the 19, early 1990s or 89. 89, 90, somewhere around there. Um, we had talked about forming a Christian rock band, and we really didn't have enough guys to really start the band. You know, we didn't have anybody except me and him. Um, we played with uh, a guy named Danny Boone for a while. He was a drummer. It seems like it never really got off the ground really good, you know. And then I think it was back probably about 15 years ago, um, a friend of mine named Salvatore Lana, he moved here from, from New York. And uh, when he moved here, uh, me and him started playing a little bit together. I got back up with my friend Stephen Bowen. I've been telling him about this guy. And uh, Stephen, I knew Stephen played bass. I knew Stephen was in charge at the time, and he wanted to start a, a Christian band back up. And so uh, it kind of formed from there. We had a we we tried to get together a few times, and the first few times we got together and started playing, we were playing secular music. Um, it never got off the ground or did anything, but we played, you know, stuff like um, Eric Clapton, Brian Adams, Journey, 
stuff like that, but it never really went anywhere. Um, we all got our, got our lives straightened out and got back in church. I got back in church and I decided, I made up my mind, man, I want to do this for God if I'm going to do this, you know. And so uh, I called Stephen up on the phone one day and I asked him, was he interested in, in getting the band back together, but this time doing Christian music? He said, yeah, man. He said, I'm really interested. Let's go for it, you know. And uh, we knew Sal was going to want to do Christian music. He had become an evangelist and gotten saved. and. Uh, his son was really interested in being in the band, and uh, so that's kind of how Port 316 got started, how it was formed. Yeah, that I am, newest member. You know, getting on there was quite a struggle, you know, I had to go to so many practices. I mean, they just, they're like, you know what, I mean, we like little Sal, we just don't know if he can hang with the big boys just yet. So, you know, I sat in my room, just, you know, really dedicated, mess up a lot. But, I mean, look at me now, my little, uh, my little nook here. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I've known these guys for a long time since I was little. And, uh, you know, I was actually really, really into the music from the start, so. Yeah, I wrote this song, Never Fall. I wrote it about three or four months ago. Um, you know, just playing around with random progressions. Actually practicing one of our other songs, and it just hit me. And, I don't know, it just kind of fell together from there. So my influences, well, like, uh, unlike a lot of my bands, like, um, unlike the other people in the band, I'm more of, um, I'm more into, like, the stuff that's going on now, the more mainstream, like, as far as, like, Christian rock goes. I like, uh, Disciple, Skillet, I'm a big fan of, um, Cutlass. Ah, just all kinds of stuff, and um, before I became like a really dedicated Christian, I listened to a lot of Three Days Grace, Reagan Benjamin, I'm a really big fan of, at Bullet For My Valentine, and you know, those are just things, you know, I try to take little pieces of their songs and I try to make them my own. Well, I had started writing some songs and putting some songs together, and uh, it was kind of, it was kind of tough at first because, uh, I was playing a lot of acoustic guitar, but I knew I wanted more of a heavier rock sound. I knew that's what me and Sal had talked about. We wanted that kind of sound. We couldn't find that kind of sound. So we kept playing with it and playing with it. And we started trying to write an album, a Christian album, a few years back. It didn't go anywhere. Um, and I started wanting to really have something more for the youth, something more rocky, edgy type Christian music. Um, so uh, I started writing, and I started writing a lot different than anything I'd ever written before. It was really rock. It was really rock music, but it had a good message to it. And the words and the lyrics, I know they came from God because I cannot write music the way some of the lyrics are on this album. Um, I know that they were inspired by God, beyond a shadow of a doubt. And uh, I'm really happy about this new CD that's coming out. And um, we've really worked hard on it. It's been really hard for us because at the same time, we're here doing this. We have families. We all have jobs. We all have responsibilities. And we all make time to do this because we really believe in it. And we really believe in what we're doing. Right. I feel great about it. Um, I mean, it's always been just a trio for over 10 years now with Steven on bass and Casey on rhythm and lead and vocal which was a lot of work on Casey and of course me on drums but we pulled little Sal my son in and uh, we really just needed someone to fill up the dead air because we were such a tight trio and uh, lo and behold man he turned out to be a whole lot more than just filling up the dead air he learns really quick and uh, him rehearsing with us, who've been playing for many years, and, you know, working closely with Casey, he's really becoming an excellent guitar player. Very dedicated, very tight, great timing. And uh, I really believe that he's what this trio needed to, com to complete the band and the, and the band's sound and the band's lineup. 
Uh, so I'm really happy with uh, Little Sal right now. He's also writing some songs and he's working with Casey who's got a lot of experience with writing music. And uh, I'm really happy on what I'm hearing. Um, it's exactly the type of music I've always felt I wanted to play, even in the secular. When I played secular music, I liked hard rock. And then, of course, when I gave my heart to the Lord, the Lord didn't change my style of music. He just sanctified it. And that means that, you know, I still like to play hard rock, but now we're playing music that really brings glory to God. And that's what it's all about for me. It's not about the crowds. It's not about how great we can play. It's all about glorifying our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I wouldn't do it for any other reason. And because we've all dedicated ourselves and committed ourselves to this cause, it's really come together super tight. And I really feel God's anointing on it. And he's really uh, put his blessing on it as well. And you can hear it, especially in the lyrics of the songs. They're straight out of the Bible. And uh, I'm really pleased with it. And I see Port 316 really going places, of course, giving God all the glory. Taught me love can be so worth the fight. And as I turn another page in this mystery called life, guide my steps, oh Lord, I pray. 